morning. Let me get settled. Morning, everybody. We've made it to Wednesday. This view includes my trash, my wash and dinner. <laughs> Getting used to being live, it includes my degree, which is sitting on my degree seeing on the floor and on my bed. Um, I think I mentioned last week, but I'm back in the office now. It feels so good. Morning, Jane. Um, good morning, Reese. Hi, Reese and Sandy. Um, it feels so good to be back in the church building. Um, many of you know Jillian Garrett, who is one of Highland's people uh, from the Garrett family. She's our summer nanny this summer, and so um, she came to the door this morning, and the boys were yelling, Miss Jillian, Miss Jillian, and immediately swept her upstairs to show her something. Oh, show her that they cleaned up the playroom. <laughs> so um, they have enjoyed having another adult in their life other than mommy and daddy. Um, so that's been really good. And yeah, it's good. It's good just to be in the church building. I'll tell you that um, the church building feels strange these days. Um, you know, our, our doors are locked because we're not letting people in. We, we don't have our volunteers who are always here to answer phones. Um, only a few of us on staff are in the office. Um, of course, like there's nothing on the bulletin board. Um, there's nothing hanging that's similar, like bulletin type things. Um, the building is quiet. KRM, uh, who usually have children here during the day, aren't here. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, um, it's strange, but it also is so good just to be back in the building. And even if it's going to be empty right now, um, to remember that it's still here and it is still here. I promise <laughs> the church is still standing. Morning, Debbie and Amanda. Glad you all are here. Um, I'll get started in a moment. Get my notes. Look at all my notes. These are my notes for the morning. <laughs> Written out on post-it notes this morning that I brought in. Who knows if I'll sort of say all of them or not. <clears throat> um, a couple things just to get started with in terms of church. Um, Hopefully you've been receiving all the emails in your inbox about our call weekend this coming weekend with Mary Alice Birdwhistle, which is um, exciting. If you are not receiving emails, please check your junk folder. There's a lot of us on staff who all of our church emails go to our junk folder, which is funny because we have church emails. I don't know how this works, but um, you should be receiving emails. If you're not, then please contact me. Um, my email is carol at hbclouisville.org and we'll figure that out. Um, but yeah, you should be getting all the information. Um, I want to applaud Walter McCorder, who I can see right over here, um, who is our church administrator, who has been doing so much uh, with all the technology to help our pastor search committee get ready for this weekend to do it virtually. So kudos to him among the many things he does. Um, so that's coming up. And now you know about the candidate, about Mary Alice, and you're going to get to know her soon. Um, she is driving from Texas. She started yesterday. She should arrive sometime today. Um, and your first chance, if you're in leadership, whether that's um, deacons, ministry council, or I think personnel as well, um, you all have a chance to um, meet her on Zoom on Thursday night. And then the congregation can begin with, the, we have, I think it's three Zooms. But yet again, check your email with all of that on Friday and on Saturday. So I look forward to um, the ability that you all will have to get to know her. And then, of course, Friday church and Sunday morning and then voting. Um, 
So of course, we've never done a virtual call weekend before. And so if you have questions about details or anything, please yet again, contact us and let us know. We're figuring this out as we go. Um, but yeah, I got to uh, actually talk to Mary Alice on the phone yesterday for a while. And that was wonderful. Um, we had the last time we had spoken really like, well, I guess we spoke some over, over all the COVID stuff, but she had visited with us as staff right before all this began. Um, Drew and I, the kids, got to have her over for dinner at our home, and that was wonderful. The boys had no idea that she was the candidate or anything like that, so that was sort of funny. But um, but yeah, we're just so excited that y'all are going to get to know her. She's, she's wonderful, and um, got to talk to her on the phone yesterday and just um, more about you all, and she's so excited and anyway so another thing i wanted to make sure you all know and and i will put it in the newsletter next week is we have we're in the process of trying to figure out how to welcome people back in our pews we don't have a date for what that is um but we know that we still have to come up with a plan anyway and so we're moving forward on that and we actually have two lay led groups now who are formed um and we will share about those in the next newsletter but there's one group that's been formed that is looking at um, logistics of how we do this safely, temperature checks, masks, all of that stuff, where people sit. Uh, and then another group that is looking at attendance um, about what type of covenant do we have um, among us about how to be safe, and then also how do people sign up for worship. So we've got two groups that are lay led that have gotten formed and have leaders, and we'll put stuff in the newsletter next week about that, but I wanted to let you know. Um, so, um, this morning, I, one thing I want to tell you is that, have any of you all read this? Um, Sue Monk Kid's new book, The Book of Longings. This is a book that I, I listened to on Audible and it was so good that I bought the, the physical copy. Um, I'm not going to talk that much about it, but I, I will say it has intrigued me so much. Um, and today, um, I want to talk about longing. And so I brought the book because I've been thinking about longing a lot just from um, that book as well. And um, this book is written um, from the story of Jesus' wife. <laughs> this may blow your mind. Um, I'm sure it blows many people's minds. But um, she basically, uh, the author, Suma Kid knows that it was never proven that Jesus didn't have a wife. And so she imagines who Jesus's wife might have been. And anyway, it's just, it's just really good. Okay, you can look at that if you want. Um, I wanted to read you something from David White. We have referenced David White a lot as a staff. This is the book Consolations, The Solace, Nourishment, Solace, thank you, Nourishment and Underlying Meaning of Everyday Words. And so I want to read to you about Longing. Longing is the transfiguration of aloneness, the defenseless interior secret core of a person receiving its overdue invitation from the moon, the stars, the night horizon, and the great tidal flows of life and love. Longing is divine discontent, the unendurable present finding a physical doorway to awe and discovery that frightens and emboldens, humiliates and beckons, makes us into pilgrim souls and sets us on some road that starts in the center of the body and then leads out like an uncaring invitation, like a comet's passing tail, glimpsed only for a moment, but making us willing to give up our perfect house, our paid for home and our accumulated belongings. Longing is felt through the lens and even the ache of the body, magnifying and bringing the horizon close as if the horizon were both a lifetime's journey away and living deep inside at some unknown core, as if we were coming home into a beautifully familiar condensed strangeness. I know that David White intentionally tries to mess with our mind and he does that with this, but I loved that because I think that longing, um, that sense within us, that restlessness within us, that's always wanting, um, but not just wanting, but um, 
longing for something else, for something deeper. Um, he uses that phrase, longing is divine discontent. Not discontent with the divine, I don't think, but discontent that that feeling of restlessness and things aren't exactly as they should be. And that that being divine, that being God within us, that frightens and emboldens that that when we feel longing for something, um, it makes us courageous, but it also scares us a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to skip ahead. Longing is nothing without its dangerous edge that cuts and wounds us while setting us free and beckons us exactly because of the human need to invite the right kind of peril, the right kind of peril. The foundational instinct that we are here essentially to risk ourselves for the world, that we are a form of invitation to others and to otherness, and that we are meant to hazard ourselves for the right thing. to invite the right kind of peril. Um, I, I Some of you are familiar with the Enneagram. I have different feelings about the Enneagram, conflicting feelings, but um, in the Enneagram language, I identify as a one. Um, and what that means is that my instinct often is to figure out all the things that could be fixed in the world and to want to try to fix them. And yet, um, that's a good thing, but it's also something that leaves me divine discontent, right? Um, and also then I have to work not to be the savior of the world. Um, and uh, Richard Rohr is a one. So all of Richard's work, uh, Richard Rohr's work on letting go is very much um, part of my spiritual practice as well. Is like, how do I try to fix the world? And how do I try to accept the world? Um, that's always where I live sort of spiritually of trying to figure out. Um, but that divine discontent, um, I have thought about that as we are in this moment um, in regards to the revealing of racism in our society. Um, I'm sorry, I, you know that I love all these books. And yeah, Jane, I'm sorry. You, you don't have to keep buying everything that we reference. But I have been reading this. This is From Here to Equality, Reparations for Black Americans in the 21st Century by William Darity and A. Kirsten Mullen. Um, I hope many of you attended our class taught by Dr. Lewis Brogdon on reparations, and he referenced a lot from this, and he referenced this in a, um, a Zoom I was in recently, and I thought, okay, I've got, I have to, I've got to get this and read it, and so I got it on Saturday, and I'm already about this far through with a million notes. Um, why I'm referencing this is just the fact that, um, how do we connect our longing that we feel for our world as it should be um, in this moment? Um, how do we long for a world where racism um, is actively fought against? How do, how do we do that? How do we stay in that divine discontent? Um, what does that look like? As I've been reading this book um, from here to equality, I am struck of how much I grew up thinking that slavery was a long time ago. I grew up, uh, we could say being taught, but that's putting responsibility elsewhere. I grew up thinking that slavery was a long time ago. And I'm reading this and I'm thinking, if this wasn't that long ago. Slavery was not that long ago. Um, and I say that as a Christian, meaning um, we as people of faith identify actively with a story that happened a long time ago. We connect 
as people of faith with a story from history, from a long time ago. And it's a story in which we as Christians don't look that good. Um, I should say that, I, let me let me edit what I just said, because the story of the gospels, they're not Christians. They are Jewish followers of Jesus. Um, and the Christian church is built from there. So I should change my language about that. But the point is, is that the followers of Jesus, um, they don't look that good in the gospels. We read the story assuming grace to be true, that Jesus still loved them. Um, and the story doesn't look good about them. It looks good about Jesus. And it was a long story ago. So why can we not look at our own American history and be brave enough to look at ourselves within it um, and have grace for ourselves? It was not that long ago. Um, and it makes me think about who has been benefiting from me feeling like it was a long time ago. Um, who benefits when um, I think that racism is over? Or who benefits when I am distracted or divided or angry? Um, so longing. Longing is about trying to seek after um, the real reality of our lives with hope, with hope that things would change. And so um, my main question for you today is where, to, where do you feel hope when you, when you have hope? Where do you feel it in your body? Hope is not just an abstract um, thing of our minds, but hope, I think, lives in our bodies. When we feel hopeful, um, we carry it within ourselves. Um, for me, it's like in my, in my gut in some ways. This is where I think my soul lives. This is where I feel it. Um, that longing is only possible for me when I have hope. When I believe that actually in Christ things are possible. And this is required for me in order to engage in like looking at American history, to engage in the uncertainty of a global pandemic, even to engage as we, um, as a church go into a call weekend, I have to have hope. I have to have hope um, that God is moving in our midst and that because of Christ, all things are possible. What would it look like for us to think that because of Christ, it is possible that we can look at um, our country's racism and we can do something different? Because of Christ, um, it is possible that um, we can create a post-COVID world that looks different, but we still enjoy. That because of Christ, it is possible that there is an... Um, someone new who we don't know who's going to come in and be our pastor and lead us, and it is going to be good. Um, hope. Where hope lives in your body. Um, and for me, I know that I'm feeling hopeful if I can pray envisioning all of us dancing. <laughs> I've shared this before. I think it was a Wednesday night class. That when I'm feeling hopeful, actually, or I'm needing to, I envision us dancing. Yeah, I mean, I literally will, I will pray imagining um, all of us dancing because dancing happens at weddings. It happens at parties. Uh, it happens if you're together with friends. Um, it's a moment where you are uh, connected and with one another, you are feeling free. You're not weighed down with impossibility. You are alive with possibility and hope and celebration. And so one of the things I've been doing, as I, even as I read <laughs> a very heavy book um, about terrible things, is can I envision still America dancing? Um, Black people within America 
dancing with joy, white people dancing with joy because they have been liberated from white supremacy. Can I, can I envision that? Um, that hope for me looks like dancing in the streets and that I have to imagine it and trust that it is possible to move forward, um, to consider the huge issue of reparations. Reparations being the fact that slavery was not that long ago and economic and um, civil liberties, liberties have not fully been restored to the people who helped build the country. Um, that I can only enter into all of that if I have hope, if I feel hope in my body, if I feel looser, if I can even just begin to imagine us dancing in the street, that that's what longing looks like to me, divine discontent, um, engaging with where our country is, um, and living with hope and dancing in the streets. If that seems random to you, welcome to my brain. Um, but know that I envision us as Highland, uh, dancing in the streets, dancing with Mary Alice um, alongside us and envisioning a new future where we don't know what it will look like. Um, but we know that if God is leading us, if that God is with us, if we are willing to choose the right kind of peril, um, that we will be dancing in hope and with joy. So I wish you well this Wednesday. Again, if you have questions about the call weekend, please contact us. We want to be able to help you connect with the church and make sure that you can get to know Mary Alice and also vote. Um, so anyway, I wish you well this Wednesday and dance around. I'll tell one story before I log off as I was just remembering it. Um, before um, we met as a staff with Mary Alice, it was a Monday. We were going to go meet for lunch. Um, I was feeling nervous uh, for obvious reasons um, of just meeting the candidate. I had known Mary Alice, but not like in that setting. And I needed, my body was feeling anxious. And so I was happened to be home that morning and the kids weren't home. And so I turned on some music. I turned on Aretha Franklin because I love Aretha Franklin. And I danced around the house. I danced around the house by myself. I was really glad that I don't think any neighbors could see in my house, but I totally danced around the house by myself. And it was amazing what that did for me, what it did for my body and what it did for my spirit to lead me into that time because I let go of the worry and I, I felt hope and possibility and joy and that changed everything. So maybe today what you need is some Aretha Franklin by yourself. If you log off from this and then turn on Aretha Franklin and dance, then I'd say uh, that was a successful uh, live feed. <laughs> but to see what it does for you, especially when you're going through something difficult. So um, anyway, and I close in naming, I've been thinking a lot about Michael French, Frank Tupper, Bob Elliott, Dick Allison, Dave Nakdeman. Um, I could, uh, I, there's many others that I could name of those who Highland has lost recently. What would they be thinking right now? Um, gosh, Michael French would be so frustrated, right? Like righteous, divine discontent about all that's going on. But yet also knowing that they are cheering us on as our cloud of witnesses, that Michael French is dancing with joy um, and cheering us on. So may you go out and dance today. Bye, you all.